We'll go back to the source garage. Today I'm taking a look at the recently released Max Shine wheel and tire detailing stand, which I've got here in this box. And uh, basically gonna assemble it, put it together, and give it a review and kind of compare it against my uh, Cycloshine wheel detailing stand. You can see it here in the background, they retail for about the same price. This is 160 base, uh, mine's 180 base. And so I just wanted to put it together and put it to the test and see what the differences are and how they perform because I'm always about learning and developing and getting better. But uh, it's a little bit of background on this first so that I I think I first saw like a couple months ago on their Instagram, they posted about it, gave a teaser of it and I finally saw the design. And this is a, what looks like a direct copy almost of the uh, Polka Premium wheel detailing stand, which I think is in Poland is that company. I'll put a picture of it up here. Uh, but it looks like almost the exact same design there. So they use what looks like some bent metal and I'm guessing this is steel because this thing is very heavy um, and my frames are made out of aluminum. So that's the first thing I noticed just with the box. But anyway, I'm gonna assemble this together, see how it goes and uh, give it a trial here. I brought up my spare tire on my F-150 and uh, throw it on there and see how it works. Uh, so I'll dive right into it. All right. So yes, I am the maker of the Cycloshine. If you weren't aware, if you're looking up this for a view of it, so I'm not gonna just open this up and start bashing it and tell you how it's terrible and mine's so much better. And I'm not, I just, I'm not that kind of way. So I'm gonna give this a fair, honest review and I'm sure there's gonna be pros and cons uh, along with it. All right, so we got no instructions. Um, oh, it looks like just a bunch of bolts, so how hard can it be? All right, so I have everything out of the box here and got it a little bit organized, trying to figure out what I'm doing. So these two attach to the front here and these go up from underneath and then put a nut and washer on top here. Wow, okay, so this is a really tight fit. I'm almost scratching the powder coat right now. So there's not much space. Between the frames here. So I'm, I just scratched the inside of the powder coat trying to get it like. So be really careful when you're doing this if you don't want to scratch the powder coat. And again, so, and I just scratch, I just, look, I just took the, I just took the powder coat off the back here just trying to line this roller up. So you, you can't adjust this without just scraping up and down here so you're damaging the the coating on it. I can like try and pull the metal back, but it's just scraping it up. So it is adjustable. So let's put it at the lower height. Okay, I think I have it done. And I've, see I've moved the workbench a lot here. This thing is heavy and sturdy, I guess. All right, so now that I've got it actually assembled here, what are my observations so far? Well, all right, so there weren't any instructions, but putting it together wasn't that hard. It's pretty simple design. There's only five pieces uh, and some feet. Uh, goes on pretty simple. 
uh, make sure you have a, this was a 13 millimeter socket and a Phillips head, although I'd probably recommend two, one for each side when you're doing the rollers here. Um, yeah, it wasn't too difficult to put together, a little awkward, but nothing, any anything extraordinary. Uh, the rollers are probably the most annoying part because they barely fit between the frames here. So I scratched up the powder coating, especially you can see here, trying to get the roller in place. Uh, and then once you got the nails in here, or the, sorry, the bolts in the either end of this, this lifts up and down here, but it's gonna scrape the powder coat no matter what. See, again, you can, it's just coming right off. And I've noticed several other spots where the powder coat's already come off on the front edge here, uh, along the back edge of this back piece, and another one here. There's more missing on this side. So the powder coating's coming off just from rubbing, I'm guessing, in transit a decent amount. Cause, I mean, these are, these are heavy pieces. This, I'm gonna guess this whole thing weighs maybe 30 pounds. I mean, yeah, it, it's sizable. Uh, so it is sturdy. Uh, it definitely feels really sturdy due to that weight. So these rollers, they adjust up to be parallel or angled down. I'm gonna have to see how tight I have to get it to be able to stay up like this. Um, I'm gonna guess pretty tight, uh, but I'll grab another screwdriver and we'll see. So I'm gonna put it on the ground now and uh, grab a tire. Or actually, no, you know what? I'll just throw the tire up on the bench here so you can see it. So this is the spare tire um, off my F-150. If I remember right, this was about 37 inches. Hey, let me check. Oh, sorry, 31, 32-ish in total height here. And uh, you could definitely go a bit bigger on here. Although it's, so it's starting to walk off the end already, so it's not on the back. I'm gonna stay there, I'll show you here. So this is a common problem. I also have it with uh, mine. So as you spin it, it's, walked off the uh, stand. So on these rollers here, as you're spinning the wheel, you, uh, you don't necessarily have completely even traction. And so it'll walk depending upon how you push it sometimes or not. So now it's, I got it walking backwards. So if I spin it again, and now you can see it walking back the other way. So just something to be aware of when you're using these to make sure that you're constantly seeing if the tire is starting to walk on you. And I'm working on a new design with my new stand to alleviate that issue, but uh, just something you're aware of. So other than that, I mean, it spins nicely. It doesn't make a whole lot of noise. Again, you're probably seeing it walk back and forth on the camera here as it's sometime touching the back roller or not. And you could definitely go a bit bigger with this. I should probably show you the, uh, how high it is up on here right now. So it's getting close to the top. You could go another three or four inches bigger maybe um, and still be okay. I wouldn't adjust it any higher than that though. So it's getting close to the top. Um, but other than that, yeah, sitting pretty good on here. Another thing I want to go over here is the uh, footprint. So this is kind of a large device to have. So it's 23 inches wide and uh, about 15 inches front to back. And height goes up to 36 inches. So what did I say? 23 by 15 by 36. Uh, it's not really collapsible. I mean, you could take the bolts off. Um, and I guess take this back piece off, but it's still, this is pretty large wherever you're gonna store it. And like I said, it's kind of heavy. Um, other than that, yeah, I don't know that there's much more to say. A <laughs> build quality seems plenty sturdy. Like I said, there was some powder coat that came off in some places. I'm kind of annoyed with the rollers. Uh, oh, I, when they're like scraping of the powder coat. I do wanna try and get these up top here. So let me grab a screwdriver again and try and lock these in up top and put a wheel on them and see if I can get them to stay. All right, so I've got it tightened down. So let's see if I can throw the wheel up here and have it not fall, uh, fall down.
Okay, so the rollers are staying and I can hit them. And I can even drop the tire on and it's staying there. Okay, so that's good. So if you tighten them down really snug, they will stay top and parallel. Now my workbench isn't completely flat here in my garage because it's a little slope, so the tire is kind of falling forward. So I'd recommend uh, leaving those uh, sloped down unless you really need them upright. All right, so to give my kind of wrap up and uh, I guess closing thoughts here and a bit of a comparison. So this thing is really sturdy. I mean, it's definitely made out of steel. Um, it's really heavy. Uh, it takes up a pretty large footprint. Um, you do have adjustable rollers with the angle, the screws on the front. Um, the powder coating is not, I, I would, wouldn't call it ideal. Uh, it's come off in some places in the packaging already when it got to me. And you're gonna scrape the back of these, um, uh, I don't know, roller adjustment points when you move the roller up and down as well as trying to get it in. Um, I had trouble with that. Uh, but other than that, I mean, the black finish looks nice and these gray rollers are nice. There's no other uh, color options. It's just the way it comes. So really sturdy um, unit and you could handle a pretty good sized tire on here. Um, so to compare it against this, uh, so I have a bunch of different powder coating color options. You can see a few behind me, a black, red, gray, blue, yellow, orange, green uh, for the frame and for the rollers. Uh, there's a bit tighter base of the rollers here versus here, so the rollers are spread out. Um, these are 13 inch rollers versus 12 inch loaders, rollers, I, or 13 and a half. And I don't know the weight capacity of these. I'm guessing it's a good amount. I mean, these are rated for hundred pounds each. I'm guessing these are somewhere similar. Um, they're pretty sturdy as you saw me throw the tire on and it held it well. Uh, there's no feet on these for, uh, or casters troll around. So on here you can buy optional locking swivel casters. So the main use for these is one moving it around on a workbench if you need to get it out of the way or move to something or put away for later or uh, moving it in and out of like a wash bay or around a garage. Uh, I sell these to shops and they use them for wash bays a lot of the time going in and out uh, with tires on them. And these are completely stainless steel uh, swivel lock and roll lock casters. Um, you also get a toggle clamp to uh, lock the rollers in place. So that'll stop the wheel from rotating. So the toggle clamp will lock uh, the roller if you want that as well. So you can do some polishing or coating, whatever you want. You don't want the wheel moving on you. Uh, you do not get that on here. Uh, as far as the size of the wheel they can handle, it's about the same. I think this one can definitely go a little bit bigger. You could raise this one up. You take the bar off and adjust these brackets. You could go taller. So I think this one could handle a couple inches um, more. That's what she said. Um, anyway, what else is there? Um, I do have optional rubber feet as well that you could put on a set of casters, although this has feet too, so it's not really much of a difference. Uh, I think they could both handle uh, the same kind of weight of tire. I, this, I don't think either of these could really handle a full-size semi-tire. Maybe this one could. Uh, it would be close. I don't have one to try out. Um, the One other thing I need to test, and I don't know if I'll have time to do it here, is the corrosion resistance. I'm guessing the powder coating will be fine. I'm not sure about the rollers. So a lot of acids and wheel cleaners they use have a bunch of different chemicals in them and sometimes colors. Uh, the powder coating that I use, I know I've already tested for stain resistance. So even if you spray all these uh, different cleaners and acids on them, all these stainless steel fasteners will not corrode. Um, the, everything just wipes right off. The powder coating was specifically chosen so that it doesn't stain and everything can be wiped and washed away. I do need to test it with these. So I'm probably gonna spray a couple different cleaners on here, let them sit and see what happens. Uh, the one thing that does concern me on here is the powder coating that's already come off is definitely gonna start rusting where there's bare metal exposed already. I mean, that's the point of powder coating. And I'm not sure if these fasteners are stainless steel or not. Uh, they look like it, I'm gonna assume they are. Uh, I'm not sure if the washers are, but I think I'm gonna hit this with a bunch of different cleaners and let it sit and I'll get back to you with how they actually perform. So this starts at 160, uh, mine starts at 180 without the casters or the toggle clamp, those are add-ons, um, as well as the colored uh, rollers or options. These are uncoated rollers. Uh, so you can decide for yourself which one works for you or your situation. I just wanted to uh, get a comparison, and find it interesting what they did. This thing is like, really sturdy as hell. I wish I'd, Part of me wishes I could do a steel build, but the weight, so I mean, this thing is 12 pounds total. It's super light and easy to move. This thing, uh, definitely a bit more. So uh, just something interesting. So I'll do the corrosion testing here, add that to the end of the video and uh, come back after that. 
All right, so I've got some uh, favorite uh, wheel cleaners out here, and I'm gonna spray them on here, let them sit, see what happens. So you got some Megs, Ultimate All Wheel Cleaner. I'm gonna spray these on different spots here. Put a little on here. PNS Brake Buster. Uh, Meguiar's non-acid wheel cleaner. And uh, lastly, you got Meguiar's. This is their old acid wheel cleaner, and the sprayers broke on this, so this is how I got to get some on here. All right. So with those on there, um, oh, you know, I should put some on a roller too. All right, so this is after one week sitting out here. You can obviously see where the chemicals have been sitting. Um, and on the rollers here, if I can try and get it to show there. So I'm just going to, oh, and you can see, so this is where the powder coat came off here. And I hope the lighting is catching this. You can see it started to corrode a little bit where the powder coats come off on this corner here. So something to be aware of if you get a frame like mine that's had some powder coat chipped off of it. But what I'm gonna do now is just try and take some paper towels and water and just see if I can uh, wipe this stuff off. I'm gonna start with the rollers here. Uh, more dots on the bottom here where it came to as it dripped down it. All right, so it looks like these are cleaning up pretty well. So I'd expected this like coated plastic here. All right, so it came off the rollers all right. All right, so it is. Corrosion resistant and everything just wipes off. It takes a little bit of scrubbing, but everything looks good. The only concern is, as I pointed out before, like down over here, uh, where the powder coat is missing, um, the mild steel will corrode. And I did put some on uh, these fasteners uh, to see if they rusted. And let me show you one of them here. Uh, looks like it has started to rust. I think I'm gonna actually take this apart here. So one of these fasteners here is kind of turned brownish um, from the cleaner that was on it. I'm gonna try and wipe it off here. So a little bit of wiping, it does clean up too. So this is th definitely thing it's stainless steel. I'm still not sure about the uh, washer, but just to show they did uh, clean up all right after wiping them off. All right, so one last thing I wanted to address that neither of these do that my new model does, which is my spinning base model here is when you have a tire on here and you're washing it to get to the other side, right? You gotta pick up the tire and rotate it and set it back down. Or on this model, you could release the casters and just spin it around to get to the back side is another way, which you couldn't do on here. But this model here, my Cycloshine spinning base, is two plates that are just pinned together and you can put a tire on here and spin it around um, and lock it back in place. You got rollers on here. Um, you can also attach this back arm onto it as well if you wanted that stability. But you do have a spinning base, so you could get to both sides of the tire and simply uh, pin it back in place just like that and uh, give you access to both sides of the tire. This is excellent for if you want to do coating or polishing in a bench top. Uh, you don't need to roll it in and out of a wash station. That's what I've mainly sold these for. And again, come in all the same colors just like this stand, so a lot of different options to customize your own. You could put casters on this as well if you wanted to. Um, and there's even an option to combine this with this. I've got holes in here to attach the frame onto this if you want the toggle clamp as well. So just a bunch of different options. I wanted to give you another idea of something else that's uh, new out there. So I hope you enjoyed the review, the comparison, uh, found it insightful and helpful in making a decision of finding what's right for you. If you're interested in one of these models, check out thesourcegarage.com to support the source. And uh, thanks for watching.